Hey, good afternoon. Happy Sunday. Um, loving this daylight savings. Oh, that light's not very good, is it? Yeah, bit of trouble. Can I move it? Better? Mm, don't know. Um, today I wanted to talk about what drains you. So we all have things in life that energize us, and then we have things in life that like make us feel like we've been like plugged in and someone's sapped out all the energy from us. And they can be people. It can be physical thing, physical environment -y things. It can be work-related. It can be all sorts of things. But what's important is that you notice what it is that is draining you. Really sit with how it feels. And, oh, my God, there's a spider's web right there. Didn't notice that. Really sit with how it feels. And then that feeling, that knowing that what it is is draining you, will hopefully, fingers crossed, make you want to change something about what it is that's draining you. Now, I have talked about boundary setting before with um, people that you find energy draining, so I won't go so much into that for today. Um, you can go back and look at one of the other lives about that or read the blog. Because did you know all of these, I get them all transcribed and they go up onto the blog on samanthaleith.com. So if you're more of a reader, now heads up, I don't go through and spell check and check the grammar, etc. They're literally just the transcripts taken and put there in case you do like reading or want to refer back to something at some point. And gradually as I get time, I'm going through and adding any of the worksheets I talked about and putting them into that blog post as well. So you'll be able to find them there. So Look, looking at what drains you or who drains you. Now, first things first, we'll talk about career, business. So if you go into a workplace, for example, sometimes it might be messy. That can be energy draining. It might be a really long commute, which can be energy draining. It might be that there's people that are really gossipy and me, 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 when you're in there, and that can be really energy draining. So... I encourage you, and if it's if you're working in your own business or working in uh, as a, in a job for somebody else with somebody else, have a look at it because you know you can actually set up your own office and go, yeah, I've got my own office. This is awesome, and without realizing it until you kind of part way through, going, oh my god, this in environment's draining me, or the way I've set my business up is draining me because I've got. I'm outsourcing things to 10 different VAs all over the shop and it's making me go bonkers. That can be really draining. So ask yourself the question, what am, what am I finding makes me go, oh, God, okay, I've got to deal with this. Or exhaust you when you think about it. So if something's frustrating you when you think about it or exhausting you when you think about it or making you kind of go into that oh, mode, then I'd look at that as being something that's draining in your life in that particular area. So that's a little bit about career and business. Finances. Oh, my God. This is a massive one for draining you. Are you never paying bills on time? Are you having those stacks of mail that you don't want to look at because, oh, my God, there's bills in there I can't, pay, can't afford to pay? Are you scared about looking at one of those credit rating reports because you think, oh, there's that old credit card I had and that's going to make me look terrible, so I'd rather not look at it. Are you ignoring the fact that your interest rate keeps going up on your mortgage when everybody else's is going down because the energy that it would take to change? Any of those things. Finances are a big one for draining because they... If you're in a situation where you're not managing your money uh, and you're living above your means or you're really stressed about it, the energy gets so sapped that you don't actually have the energy to do anything to get you out of the money drama that you're in, which is just awful because it's a loop, it's a pattern that you can't get out of. So I encourage you to look at it, ask yourself the question, what, it is, what is it about my money that's making me go... <laughs> or exhausting me or stressing me out. And write down five, you know, I like the number five. Ironic, really, because it's not my lucky number. Um, write down five things that you're finding really draining about your finances, because then we can look at, what do I need to do about those things to change them? And the same with all of these categories that we go through. Come up with a couple, if, if there's something in that area that's draining you, 
write it down, nut it out, really think about it, sit with it. And as I said, that's how you implement change. It's romantic life. Ooh, love life. Ooh, is that draining you? Are you spending all your hours on Tinder and Bumble and getting stressed out and feeling really shit about yourself because you haven't got anything happening? Then it's draining you. Get rid of it. If it's not bringing you joy and zest for life, don't do it. And those, a lot of those apps, etc. In if you're searching for a partner or a, um, either a romantic partner or a sexual partner or you know the love of your life, you know, if you're in that pattern of searching, 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 that can be really draining, and it might be time to turn off. If you're already in a relationship, then a lot of boundary stuff within relationships can impact you and start making you feel really drained. So, you know, who is responsible for things? Do you have, I know Brooke, Brooke Castillo talks a lot about, um, I've just forgotten what she calls it, uh, not the guide, but the manual, the manual that we have for other people. Oh no, Jen, you can't have it draining you to death. You need to work on that. We can, we can fix that. Everything's figure outable according to Marie Folio. Um, yeah, relationships shouldn't be draining. Relationships have bumps and speed humps and lumps and curves and drama that go with them. But if they're really draining you and getting to the point where you feel like that, mm, something's, something's got to give or talk about or work on. And I tell you, relationship counselling is awesome for people in relationships and people should never be scared of that. It's not a... It's a strong couple that goes to relationship counselling and works on these things and tries to fix them. And it's in that relationship counselling, which I am not by any stretch of the imagination, probably the last person you should come to for relationship advice. No, not quite. Um, that people that go to counsellors to talk about their relationship and work on those, the stories that I hear about the changes that they can make and the power that comes into it, amazing. But again, you can't get to that point unless you can be really honest with yourself like you're being and go, my relationship's really draining me. I don't know whether I'm Arthur or Martha. I'm doing all the grunt work and they're not doing anything. I'm providing all the financial stability and they're not contributing. I'm, if you're feeling in that kind of, uh, or simply they snore and sleep talk all night so you're really tired like that can be really draining it can be something as simple as that that make it, is making that relationship feel awful so again sit down go to a place where like I'm in my courtyard at the moment go to a place where you feel nice and you can sit down and be honest with yourself and think about these things and write it out write it out write it out you know what I say write it out write it if you write it out it makes it all real and you can confront things a lot easier Next one's family and friends. Now, I've, again, talked about this before with toxic friendships and relationships and family and things. But if you've got friends that are draining you, there's nothing in the rule books that says they still need to be your friends, people. It's not, you don't need everyone to like you. You don't need to stay friends with everybody forever. And you don't need to like everybody. And if there's a relationship that's not equal in your friendship, so you're getting drained by the energy you have to put into that friendship all the time, or you have to you feel, because it may not actually be true, but you might feel like you have to do so much more work, or you're always the person calling, or you're always the person driving to see them, you're always the person that pays, da, da, da. and that can get really resentful. So any of those situations can be really, really draining. It might be a case where you're always the person that listens, and that can be really draining because you feel like you're not getting an avenue to do the talking. Um, it's friendships, that kind of friendships and family draining is a, is a big one and it can completely paralyze you. And this one I do know absolutely from my heart. Um, when you're in relationships where you don't feel like they're even in friendships and family, it can cause so much resentment and turmoil and can destroy the relationship when it would have been easier to either end the relationship early on before it got to that point or set better boundaries. And remember that in any of those situations, you can't control what someone else is doing, how they're acting, what they're saying, how they're feeling. You can't change how they're feeling. That's totally up to them. So don't think that 
anything you're saying or doing is going to change what they're doing or feeling because it's not okay it's absolutely not so that's another big one sit down write out anything in that area of your life that is draining you physical environment touched a little bit on this in the do it diet that three part i did if you're in a messy cluttered environment if there's it says me who's got a massive spider web just like dangling in front of me there um is making you feel icky i know myself i find that incredibly draining i have been told by friends that you know sam your house doesn't have to look so perfect you know we don't mind if it's messy when we come over i'm like i actually don't do it for you guys i don't care if you don't like how my house looks i can't stand it if it's messy if i haven't put everything away i don't like it i feel sick i feel drained um so physical environment's really important to me and they're broken things um it was a funny story i had a broken toilet roll holder and it's in the bathroom i don't use so oh, i didn't really care about it and i had a very good friend of mine yvonne, yvonne said to me a couple of times like if I come to your place the one more time and that toilet roll hold is not fixed, and I asked Elodie about it, she was like, yeah, it's really annoying, Mum. And I was like, oh, okay. So it was draining other people and annoying them, but not me. So I got it fixed. Now everybody's happy with the toilet roll holder. But, like, if a fly screen's broken or there's a broken gate or um, dead plants in the garden, lots of weeds, anything like that, if you've got curtains that are broken, I've got a couple of curtains at the moment and the um, uh, the interfacing on the back of, oh, I knew that word. Ah, I'm so impressed with myself. Narrowly, if you watch this later. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, and the interfacing is starting to like uh, disintegrate. So on the floor, I'm getting like these white, white bits of fluff and I was like, what the hell is that? And so I was, and I was like, oh my God, it's those. So it's like time for new curtains. That's I'm um, now that's making me go, Ugh, you know, physical environment, big one, broken things, get rid of them. You don't need that chipped bowl. You're never going to fix it. I know that one, don't I? Fun and recreation. Are you doing enough? Like if you're actually, this is a, a reverse one because fun and recreation should be energizing and invigorating and make you feel fabulous. So the draining part is if you're not doing it, or if you're doing things that are fun and recreational for someone else because you haven't set up the right relationship with them to let them know that you really, really don't enjoy fishing, you know? So fun and recreation should really be what it says, fun and recreation. So if there's things in your life in that category that are draining you, chances are it's actually linked to one of the other categories. So you might be playing a sport and you love the sport, but because of money, you're not getting the right equipment, which is making you feel bad about the sport that you actually love. So look at where there's a link to another category in your life that in the fun and recreation part that is making you feel bad and blah about it, okay? Um, next one was what I want to talk about. Oh, up here. And in here, spiritual, emotional, mental well-being, development, etc. Um, this is a big one. If you're suffering from any anxiety, depression, sadness, stress, your cortisol, cortisol levels are out of wonky, um, your diet's not great, any of, any of those kind of things impact how you're feeling mentally, spiritually, in your heart, etc. But again... When you're feeling drained spiritually or you're feeling like you're not doing what you're meant to be doing and that's really draining you or you're feeling like you're a bit empty, chances are, again, this is one of those things where it's actually about one of the other areas. So when you're not getting drained in those other areas, the spiritual and emotional well-being goes up and up and up and up and up and you feel better and better and better. So if you're getting drained in those, that can't come up and it will weigh, it will weigh you down. Um, so again, if you're feeling thick in any of those areas, look at in physical, um, spiritual, heart-centered stuff, look at other areas of your life. And the last one is health. Um, now, draining in your health, I know recently I've had a whole lot of 
test done. Um, and I'm so healthy, it's not funny, considering I look so tired. Um, apart from one area in my life, one area that we did the tests on, and that's actually made me feel really good because now we know what the issue is and I can work on the issue. Previously, I was like, oh, I'm going mental, I'm going crazy. So I would actually suggest for most people, um, and I'm not a health coach, I'm not a wellness coach, so it's not my area of expertise, but I'm amazed at the number of people that don't go every so often, every couple of years, every year, whatever, depending on what your family history is, and actually have a really good look at everything. Now, if you go to a more, um, I'm not going to say modern, but a more integrative GP or clinic, they will run a lot of tests that standard GPs won't do. So talking to a doctor that actually will look at different areas in your life is great because they will do the tests that other people won't and then you will get better answers. So again, in your physical health, if you're feeling drained, chances are it's because you're not looking after one of the other areas that I just talked about. So it's all about those boundaries and the decluttering and who you're spending time with and what you're doing to motivate yourself. If any of those areas are out of alignment, your physical health will be impacted. So let's recap. I want you to look at the areas of your life where you are feeling drained or stressed or going, oh my God, I can't believe I'm going to do this. Ah. So what are they? Career or your business, your finances. It's all about, a lot about the money, honey. Um, your romantic life, sex life family and friends, your physical environment, your fun and recreation, your heart and spirituality stuff, and your physical health. Look at any of those areas, write down five things that are making you feel drained or stressed or ugh when you think about it. And then tomorrow night, I will talk about how we can look at those and make them better and not be so drained because you don't want to be drained in life. You want to be happy and vibrant and smiling. Have a great night and I'll see you tomorrow.